Hello everyone. I am Dr. Soundara Raj. I am happy to interact with you through this video. In this video, I am going to discuss with you the accounting treatment for the calculation of cash flow from operation. These are all a few details about me. These are all the subjects of my specialization in teaching and research. After you watch the full video, if you find the video beneficial, give a like to the video and do subscribe my channel as well. Let's get into the problem. Calculate cash flow from operating activities from the following information. Statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st March 2020 is presented below. Revenue from operation 60,000 rupees. Other income 5,000 rupees. We will find the details of note number 1 down here. Total revenue comes to 65,000. Expenses are presented. Cost of materials consumed 15,000. Employees, benefits, expenses 10,000. Depreciation and amortization expenses as per note number 2 comes to 7,000. Other expenses according to note number 3, 13,000. So the total expenses come to 45,000. From 65,000 total revenue, the total expenses amounted 45,000 has been subtracted. So that they have calculated profit before tax amount at 20,000 rupees. From profit before tax, they have uh, subtracted provision for taxation 8,000 and they have uh, finally arrived at the profit after tax amount at 12,000 rupees. This is what we learn from the statement of profit or loss for the year ended on 31st March 2020. Let's also have a look at the notes they have prepared. Other income, note number one. Profit on sale of machinery 2000, income tax refund 3000. The profit on sale of machinery, income tax refund, these two are non operating incomes. So they have to be deducted from profit before tax and extraordinary items to calculate the funds from operations first, followed by cash flow from operations next. Then the second note is about depreciation and amortization expenses. Depreciation amounted 5000. This is an operating expenditure but non cash expenditure, therefore, it should be added. What about goodwill amortized? Goodwill amortized is a non operating item, therefore, it should also be added with the profit before tax and the extraordinary items to calculate the funds from operations. Then, regarding note number 3, other expenses are presented. Rent, this is an operating as well as cash expenditure, so just ignore it. Loss on sale of equipment, this is a non-operating item, therefore it has to be added back with the profit before tax and extraordinary items. Additional information are presented for two years, two consecutive years, one for the year ended on 31st March 2019, the other is for the year ended on 31st March 2020. So therefore, 31st March 2020, this particular date is the ending date for the current year of the business. Provision for taxation 10,000, opening, closing 13,000, rent payable 2,000, 2,500, trade payable 21,000, 25,000, trades receivable 15,000, 21,000, inventories 25,000, 22,000. See, among these items, Provision for taxation for which we have to open a ledger account to find out hidden information in the problem. Rent payable is a current liability. We have to find out what change has been taken place and what way it is going to affect the amount of cash flow from operation. Trade payable is also a current liability. Trades receivable is a current asset. Inventory is a current asset. I will let you know four formula that will help you to record the changes in this current assets and current liabilities and make you to understand what influence they have on the cash flow from operation. Now let's look at first the formula. Formula for changes in current assets and current liabilities. Increase in current assets leads to cash outflow. If you find increase in the value of stock of the current year comparing that of the previous year you can assume that additional stock has been purchased and therefore cash has gone out therefore increase in current asset leads to cash outflow and the opposite one if stock balance comes down in the current year comparing that of the previous year you can assume that 
stock has been sold therefore cash has come in so this leads to cash inflow so therefore from our example we can generalize the fact that increase in current assets leads to cash outflow decrease in current assets leads to cash inflow regarding current liabilities increase in current liability cash inflow what is that if you find increase in the value of creditors what is it you can understand that you have stopped paying money if you paid money to the business enterprises from which we have bought goods there may not be a chance for the place of creditors so creditors would not have arisen since we have not paid money for the purchase of goods or materials you find the new item of creditors come into our books of accounts so what i mean to say when you stop cash outflow creditors rise in the books of accounts so stopping cash outflow is also equivalent to cash inflow it is like people used to say reduction of expenditure is also an income and the same perspective you can understand that so therefore when creditors balance goes up in a problem you find it is cash inflow decrease in current liabilities if you find a decrease in the value of creditors which is one of the items of current liabilities you can understand that you have paid creditors a sum of money and therefore the balance of creditors for the business enterprise during the current year comes down by the amount you have paid to the creditors so this is cash outflow kindly keep yourself very thorough with this four formula which i have brought out make yourself thorough with this so that you can understand the concepts correctly working notes net profit before tax and extraordinary items is a starting point for the calculation of cash flow from operations therefore let us first calculate net profit before tax and extraordinary items net profit after tax according to the statement of profit and loss 12000 rupees with that the provision for taxation made 8000 rupees during the current year see the provision for taxation made it is very clearly stated in the statement of profit and loss itself so this 8000 rupees is added back how about the income tax refund which you found in other income note the note you have prepared for other income the income tax refund should be subtracted because it has already been included in the net profit and that should be now removed from the net profit to find out the net profit before tax and extraordinary items so 17000 rupees we have calculated what about uh, the preparation of provision for taxation account it has to be prepared to find out the hidden information if any in the problem as usual provision is of a credit balance you write opening balance of provision for taxation on the credit side 10000 rupees the closing balance is written in the debit side we were already informed through a point in the statement of profit and loss provision of 8000 rupees towards taxation was made in the year so therefore what is a normal entry profit and loss account debtor to provision for taxation so you can write the statement of profit and loss within bracket for your understanding you can also write new provision 8000 rupees now you please try to understand opening balance was 10000 in provision for taxation now a new amount of 8000 has come into this account therefore the closing is supposed to be 18000 if nothing else has been taken place through this account but what is the actual closing balance it is only 13000 so you find 5000 rupees is missing from the account therefore it has gone out of the business in the name of tax paid so provision for taxation account debtor to bank account when money goes out we credit money according to real account credit bond goes out and that is what recorded here now let's go back to the final statement which is nothing but statement of cash flow from operating activities or operation net profit before taxation and extraordinary items 17000 now we do adjustment for non cash and non operating items both the expenses as well as the income first let's look at the items to be added as i already explained when we went through the notes prepared in the problem depreciation has to be added why though it is an operating expenditure it is a non cash expenditure so it doesn't affect the cash position of the business to to be added 
Goodwill amortized is only a book entry. This is also a non-operating as well as non-cash expenditure. It has to be added back. Loss on sale of equipment is purely a non-operating item and therefore it is also added. So they have arrived at the total of 27,000 rupees in this stage. Now we do adjustment for the non-operating or non-cash incomes. So you find profit on sale of machinery that's given in the problem. Let's have a look at the problem. See profit on sale of machinery. These two items we have already considered. I told you rent is operating and cash expenditure therefore you should not touch it. The loss on sale of equipment is already added. Now let's come to the solution again. So you find profit on sale of machinery is subtracted and they have arrived at 25,000 rupees in stage which is named to be operating profit before working capital changes. With that you do adjustment for working capital changes in relation to the current assets and current liabilities. Now you need to recall this four formula. Increase in current assets leads to cash outflow. Decrease in current assets leads to cash inflow. Increase in current liabilities leads to cash inflow. Decrease in current liabilities leads to cash outflow. See now what are the items to be added. Decrease in inventory is cash inflow. This I have written. You can also write it in bracket. Increase in rent payable cash inflow. Increase in trade payable cash inflow. See this is the current asset. You find decrease in current asset leads to cash inflow. Regarding these two current liabilities, increase in current liabilities lead to cash inflow. There is only one item left out that is trade receivable, one of the current assets in the problem. You find increase in that current asset, it leads to cash outflow. Now after you do adjustment for all these current assets and current liabilities, you arrive at a figure of 26,500 which is nothing but since it is a positive figure, it is named as cash generated from operations. If it is a negative figure, you can very well write cash used in operating activities or operations. Now, you deduct the income tax paid. Income tax paid 5,000 rupees that we found out by preparing this particular ledger account and therefore this item is subtracted and what about the income tax refund that we have received and that is added here. It is an income so it is added here. Now you finally calculate the figure of 24,500 rupees which is nothing but net cash inflow from operating activities. You can also name it as what net cash generated from operations or operating activities. I hope you clearly understood my explanation on the accounting treatment for computing cash flow from operations or operating activities. Watch this video for a couple of times to gain a better understanding. We will meet in some more videos on the preparation of cash flow statement as well. Thanks for watching the video.